Virzil, your one-stop solution to everything learning. Hi guys, we are just starting. Good evening to all the participants and greetings from Virzio. I would like to welcome our host today, Manvi Tyagi. Thanks, Ajay. Am I audible, Ajay? I hope I'm audible to all the students. Okay, fine then. Yeah, so to talk about Manvi Tyagi, uh, she is a software engineer at Twitter and the founder of the coding club, Girl Coded. She has interned at PayPal and uh, Innovacer during her college and cracked interviews at several tech giants like Microsoft, Amazon, Cisco. So once again, we welcome you, ma'am, and I would like to hand it over to you. You can proceed. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Ajay. Uh, can you guys please confirm if I'm audible to you or not? Seems like I'm not audible. Is it so? All right. Okay, then, guys. Uh, I think Ajay has already introduced me. We'll just start with the session then directly without wasting a lot more time. I'm going to share my screen. Just let me know if it is visible or not. I'm trying to set up the chat in my another monitor. For some reasons, I cannot see your chat. Um, anyway, okay. So as you guys know that you have or you have come here for attending um, a session on recursion which is uh, there are some technical problems on my end just give me a second to resolve them all right so uh i want to know like how many of you are already a little bit familiar with recursion or uh um, send a message on the chat if you have never you know if you are just a complete noob in recursion you have never studied recursion or don't know anything about it at all so guys, uh, the thing is like, let's um, communicate it in the beginning first itself. I am trying to make it an interactive session as well. So um, I'm hoping answers in the chat so that, you know, I know what do you guys already know and what should I teach? So I see quite new as uh, many of as many of the, as the main response here. So shall I assume like other people are already good at recursion? Okay. So like, as you can see in the picture itself that is shared on my screen, recursion is something like a uh, scene in the Spider-Man movie, a function calling the same function. If I just, you know, wrap it up after uh, this slide, then also recursion is done. We are done guys. Bye. This session is done. A function calling the same function inside the same function is recursion. To be honest, this is the uh, basic theory concept of recursion. Everything else revolves around it now. So today's agenda will be, will be like, I'll be introducing recursion a little bit. Then I will solve some problems, some basic problems, two, three problems to derive a definition of recursion. So we will solve some questions first without knowing um, a lot about recursion. And then we will generate a mantra to solve, man, a kind of a mantra to solve all the, almost all recursive problems. Okay. So uh, then we'll solve some other problems. So basically we'll define it. Then we'll solve uh, two, three problems, basic problems to get more clarity around it. Then we will kind of define our algorithm or not uh, a mantra basically to which will fit in all recursive questions, which you could use to solve any or every recursive problem. And then we'll solve some more problems using the defined algorithm that we just derived. We'll also be drawing recursive trees, stack diagrams, and doing dry runs along with the questions. Like as time permits, cause it's a one hour session, I'll, I might not be able to draw a lot of stack diagrams and do a lot of dry run, but wherever it will be needed, we'll uh, for sure do it. And at the end of the session, after solving all these problems, we will see how can you, know, you identify if this particular problem can be solved by recursion or not. Again, why this session is important, why this session is very important, because recursion forms the basis of backtracking, dynamic programming, many trees problem, linked list problems, graphs algorithms. So basically, when you, if you have started rec uh, studying recursion, no, programming has actually started now only. Until now, you were just doing arrays and binary numbers, conversions and all that stuff. Um, the real game starts from here. Algorithms start from here itself. That's why this session and the topic itself, recursion is very important. So um, does anybody know, like, does anybody want to define what is recursion for me in the chat in just one single line? Nobody? Uh, so I, this is just giving me the idea that people who are here 
are absolutely beginners in recursion. The process by which function call itself, a function calling itself, calling back the same function. I'm reading the responses from the chat. And yes, effectively recursion is calling a function inside the same function. Okay. So in programming, recursion simply means that a function will call itself. In the most ba basic terms, this is it. Now I have a question, like many of you might be using C++ as your primary language. And those who do not know, main is the first, like the function from where uh, the pro program's execution begins. So main is that function, nothing big about it. Just consider it as a normal function for timing. So if I co write code like this inside main, if I keep, if I call main, what will be the output? What will happen? Any answers in the chat? What will happen if I run this code? Sumit is saying no output. Will there be some error? What will exactly happen? Of course, there will be no output. So guys, main is calling main. Main again calls main. Main again calls main. Infinite loop. Yes, that's the answer I was expecting. You will be entering an infinite loop and you'll get a runtime error or a segmentation fault. Right? So I am trying to give you an idea why, why I asked this question was uh, giving you an idea around what else is required to solve a recursive problem other than calling the same function inside it. This thing is called as base case and you have to do something to prevent yourself from entering this infinite loop condition. Okay, so programming is about programming, right? So um, I am done with, uh, to be honest, what I um, what theory I wanted to share with you. I'll just share one more analogy. After that, we'll just straightforward move to code. <clears throat> So what's going on? A child couldn't sleep. So her mother told her a story about a little frog who couldn't sleep. So the frog's mother told her a story about a little bear. Bear couldn't sleep. So the bear's mother told her a story about a little weasel who fell asleep. So basically the person, uh, there is a dependency. If a mother uh, is telling the child a story about frog and frog is also not able to sleep. So frog's mother is telling her a story about a little bear. Bear is again not able to sleep. So bear's mother is telling her, uh, her a story about a little weasel. This will keep happening until, you know, some person finally sleeps. So weasel, let's say, slept. Weasel slept and then bear got to know that weasel slept in the story. So the bear slept. When frog got to know that the bear slept, then frog also felt asleep. And then when the frog felt asleep, the child fell asleep. What's going on here, guys? This is a story. This is a poem. But there is a programming concept being depicted here. Any answers in the chat? Of course, it is recursion, right? It's like a sleeping function, which is being called again and again. And also, you can uh, also see that what is the base case in this case? Weasel sleeping is the base case. If the weasel would not have slept, nobody would have, nobody would have uh, you know, slept. You were in an infinite sleeping loop. That's all about the definitions and theory. We'll write some code and then we'll come back to some more theory. We'll start with some questions. Um, so let's say I have a question that I want to print from numbers from one to N. So I want to write code for, I want to write a function print. And what will this function print do? If I give it a number N, it will print one, two, three, four, everything until N. So basically if N is five, the output will be one, two, three, four, five. How can we do it? <clears throat> Any approaches that come to your mind after listening this question? The most straightforward approach that you can think of is <clears throat> using uh, a for loop and running it from i equal to one until n and then just printing, like pretty simple. But what we want here, we want to solve this question using recursion. <clears throat> Sorry. So what uh, we just, you know, uh, did a little definition. What is recursion? Recursion is calling a function. So if I want to print five, if I want the result of one, two, three, four, five as this, and we'll be writing this function, right? So what should this function actually do? Um, we have to do it by recursion. So I'm just blindly calling print inside. But the question is, I can't hear you. Uh, am I audible to everyone else? Okay, Dhana, uh, Lakshmi, I guess it's a problem on your end please check. Um, so I'll be repeating though. We want to use recursion to solve this problem. What is recursion? A function calling itself is recursion. <clears throat> what should it do? It should print uh, numbers from one to five. I want to call print inside it, but what should I, you know, ask this print to do? If I know, you know, if I have to print five, uh, one to five, 
So if I call print of four, this function will return one, two, three, four. Let's assume that. Okay, we will. Is my voice breaking, guys? Again, probably the one who the one person who mentioned it, uh, Mayuri. It again, it's it's a problem uh, on your internet end. Okay. So <clears throat> print one, two, three, four. All right. So uh, yeah, let's say this function printed one, two, three, four for us. What do we need to do now? Let's assume that there is something happening. There is some magic happening. The thing I am I'm calling it magic here, but you know when we move uh, proceed forward in the session, we will understand how this magic is happening. But you know that by the definition of this function, this function prints one to uh, n, whatever number is passed through it. So one to four, it will print. That part is done. What else should we do? Anybody? What else should we do after this function printed numbers until four for us? We should ultimately print five, right? So um, print five, I'll print four inside and print something by ourselves. Now let's see what will happen if I write code like this. N is let's say five here. So five means uh, calling four. So four will be again N minus one and see out N. So should this code work? What will happen if I run it? Let's see. It should give me an error. A warning is generated. Is it because of some does not return a value? Okay, this was because of some other error. So we got a segmentation fault. Can anybody tell me why we got this segmentation fault? Five is calling four, four is calling three. What's happening? Let's see once what's happening. We I have a function called as print five. Ins inside print five, this print five function is being called on line number 22, okay? On line number 22, I call print five. Print five will call, uh, this function is being called here. We reach line number six. On line number six, we call print n minus one. Guys, I am writing code in C++, but it should not matter. Like if you want to write the same logic in Python, Java, or C, or any other language, the logic still remains the same. So uh, we'll continue writing code in C++ for this session. You know, we can't uh, accept the response a request of everyone. Some people might be Java coders, some might be Python coders. So, but the logic still remains the same. So try to focus on the logic. Syntax wise, it doesn't really matter. You can rewrite the code once the session is over. Okay, so what's happening? I am on line number five now, print five. On line number six, after uh, line number five, will come on line number six, which is print of n minus one, which means I'm calling print of four now. Where will I, this is line number six. Where will I go after line number six? I move to line number seven, no, right? Uh, like if you guys do not know, there every function is executed in a stack. Like the programs that you write are all executed in a stack. And the first call in the stack is print five. The second call is print four. And until and unless this call is removed, we can't move forward to the next line. That is why if you call print four, you will go back to line number five once again because you are calling a function here. The program has not completed yet. So it will not move to line number seven. It will again go to line number five. Is this part clear guys? Why we did not move to line number seven after line number six? Because we called a function here. So that function has to be completed before we move to the next line. Is this part clear or are there any doubts? Okay. If there are any doubts, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, you will not understand the rest of the lesson. Okay. On print four, we call print three. We again come to next line. Yes, Lakshmi, you can ask your doubt. And uh, this is line six again. This will call print two. This will again call print one. That will call print zero. That will call print minus one. That will call print minus two and minus three and minus four. So you see why we got segmentation fault here. Because there was no stopping condition. We are entering an infinite loop. My question to you all is, where should I stop? Like if I am making a call of print one, should I just print one and return? I should not call zero, right? I do not want to print zero. I don't want to make a call to print zero. That's why when I reach one, I should just print it and return my result to the upper function. So that is why here comes the condition this is the weasel, right? Who fell asleep at the first from the poem that we just did. So, which is preventing you from 
going into base case. So if n is one, you just see out one and you return. See, I got the result one, two, three, four, five. So basically what I did, I asked recursion to give me the answer of four, which was one, two, three, four. And after recursion gave me the answer, I printed it one, two, three, four was already printed with this. I printed five. That's how I got my answer. And to prevent myself from getting into an infinite loop, uh, I just added a base condition. Is this question clear guys. Uh, so, okay. Let me see the uh, doubts on the chat. I want you to repeat from print seven. Why will we not take print seven after print six? Okay. I will tell you that uh, again, Lakshmi. Mm, Ma'am, I don't know about C++. What is C out? Guys, C out means printing. C out is uh, symbolist to uh, print statement in other languages. Okay. So Lakshmi, uh, you are saying after this line, why I did not execute this line. So this is a function called Lakshmi. This is not a something that is happening instantly. This function call enters into the stack and until and unless actually we are running this line only. So see until and unless you complete this line, you will not be able to come on this line. It's not asynchronous, it's synchronous programming. So once one thing completes, only then the other thing completes. In layman language, you can understand in those terms. So basically, if this part is entered in the stack, this function is entered in the stack. And once it returns, once it pops out from the stack, only then the function call continues forward. Okay, let's do another simple question. Now I reverse the question. Now I am, I want you guys to give me the answer for it. Okay, so. Now the question is print n to one. Basically, if I give five as input this time, this should return five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So what should I do? Again, I will probably ask four to print uh, four, three, two, one, right? And I'll need to print five. My question is where should I print five? If I print five here, let's say if I write the C out statement, print statement here, will I get my answer? Answers in the chat. Will I get my answer if I write print five after the recursive call? Why? I will get, what will I get my answer as like, it will be something really messed up. But if I understand from what I can see, we'll get four, three, two, one, five. So where should we print this five? We should print this five here. See out basically five should be there. So it will still, the logic will remain same. The only thing that will change is instead of printing this here, you'll print it at the top. In fact, you can, okay. Uh, let me share my screen once again, no worries. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So let's run it. You got the required answer five, four, three, two, one. Here is one small optimization that you can do. If you can change the base case, if N is zero, then don't do anything. So basically one, you don't need to explicitly print one as well. This question should also be clear, right? I hope it is as clear as well. Okay. Let's do one more question. Next question is finding the factorial of a number. What is factorial of a number? Let's say F, if I write F4, F means factorial. Then factorial means multiplying all the numbers until this number starting from one. So it will come out as 24. Similarly, if I want the answer of factorial four, it will be five into four into three into two into one, which is 120. I should have written four uh, below it. Okay, let's see, this is 24. Factorial of three is three into two into one. I hope this is clear what is factorial and we want to solve this question using recursion. Now see a pattern here. If I want to calculate the answer of factorial five, will knowing the answer of factorial four help me? See, if you look at it closely, this part of it is nothing but factorial four, right? Isn't it? This is factorial four and the number itself is being multiplied. So factorial four, five is nothing but five into factorial of four. Similarly, what is factorial four? It should be four into factorial of three. So basically, if I want the answer for factorial of five and I'm writing the code right now, okay? And the code returns an integer, let's say. Okay, is my voice not clear, guys? Or is it a problem on Cherry's end? Okay, it's clear, Cherry, it's probably on your end. Okay, so I need to calculate the answer of factorial four and I need to multiply this. That is what I want. So um, what... What is, what is the small answer that I need to calculate the real answer? Am I still audible guys to everyone? So small answer is factorial of n minus one. How will I calculate my real answer? Multiplying the small answer with n, right? Okay. 
guy what is the condition that will save us from going into the base case um, infinite loop basically what is the base case what is the smallest answer that you know for factorial for n equal to 1 you you already know that the factorial of 1 is 1 or even the factorial of 0 is also 1 so you could also take 0 or 1 itself no worries for n equal to 0 you return 1 and ultimately you return the answer i already calculated it it's not a function call it's a variable so we got the factorial of 5 which is 120 so if you calculate the factorial of 8 or any other number you will get the correct answer from this code okay or some smaller number that you can calculate in your head all right let's see the recursive tree of this particular code f5 was calling calling f4 and we were multiplying 5 into it then f4 was calling f3 and we were multiplying 3 into it 4 into it and 3 into it and 5 into it that was returned so basically the tree looked like this only how did the tree of print 1 to n look like uh, same all the three questions that we have done have the same recursive tree in all the three questions this was the tree so these were like basic questions setting ground for the definition of recursion and the um structured algorithm structured way or structured steps basically i should say that you could follow to solve recursive problems <clears throat> okay on the basis of the problems that we have solved nothing new okay that is why i wanted to show the problems first and tell about this um, definition later so one thing that we did on all the three question was identifying the smaller problem right we knew the answer of uh, for finding the answer of factorial 5 we wanted factorial 4 to return an answer that was a smaller problem that we wanted to solve then we did some work our by ourselves in case of factorial we did some multiplication by ourselves in case of printing we printed something by ourselves and the third thing that we did in all three questions was identifying the base case which would prevent you uh, from going into the infinite loop what is base case if we think from like what we just did wasn't base case the smallest problem for which you obviously know the answer like after it there should be no recursive calls and you know the answer for it for factorial 0 the answer was 1 if n has become 0 it should return basically base case so these are the three steps that you have to do in all the recursive problems identifying smaller problem doing something by yourself and then identifying the base case also another note i will remove this you have to recognize whether your work will be done first or recursion shall, uh, shall do its work what do i mean by that like if you see the code in previous questions in this question we first asked recursion to do some work and then we did some work, work by ourselves in this question we did our work first and then we asked recursion to do some work for us right in factorial it doesn't um for in factorial you need the answer to do your work so basically there could be two ways of calling recursion and uh, the sequence of this could change and that really matters that changes the whole logic of the question right so you should also recognize whether you should do your work first or you should let recursion do its work first any doubts until now if not then we will move on why is base case necessary again until now we have already talked about it a lot we will get runtime error segmentation fault we will run into an infinite loop if we do not define a base case right and base cases like some general base cases that you could keep in mind it often correspond uh, like base cases often correspond to emptiness zero remember from the last question in all the three cases the base case was zero empty string in k questions of string empty string could be a base case empty list empty set empty tree this is not a formula but like um, in general you would find in many questions base case correspond to emptiness identifying the smaller problem let recursion do the work the first step of the problem you have to identify a smaller problem so basically decompose a larger instance of the problem into one or more simpler or smaller instances that can be solved by recursive calls and then recombine the result of those smaller problems to produce the solution to original problem um we also call it as a recursive relation like uh, for factorial fn was equal to n into fn minus 1 which was a recursive recurrence relation again so in this particular image both the uh, points are covered you have to identify the smaller problem and then the result of the smaller problem has to be combined with something else which is our work okay and while we identify the smaller problem we have to take a leap of faith we have to trust recursion so if i am calling factorial 4 i have to trust that factorial 4 will give me 
the right answer and then think about uh, building the logic of course you should know how it's happening but for every problem you just uh, for uh, while making the logic trust recursion take the recursive leap of faith okay so there is a question in the chat what's the need of recursion like we can solve the factorial why yes anupam we could have solved all the questions above with recursion i just wanted to introduce the concept of recursion that's why i solved those problems with recursion the goal was not to solve those problems the goal was to solve them with recursion so that i could introduce this structured formula of find, identifying smaller problem finding the base case and doing some work by yourself that's why i solved them with recursion and again my work like i'm asking you to trust recursion and like let recursion do everything but you know nothing you know you don't get anything in life if you yourself don't do anything same same applies for recursion as as well trust recursion let recursion solve the smaller problem but you you have some responsibility as work well, which is the my work or your responsibility step so basically asking recursion to solve the smaller problem and using the answer of that smaller problem to find the final answer that is your responsibility you have to do it okay let's do some more problem solving now uh, basically are there is no more theory that i can share with you guys on recursion that was all that's why i am again moving to problems solve some more questions okay now we know the uh, formula structured steps that we have to do and we will try to solve all the questions by using that and we'll be able to solve all of them by using that particular structure so the first question in this is count of digits mm, so let's say if you have a number call at 78643 how many digits are there in this number there are five digits in this number okay again guys obviously you can solve this particular question by iteration but the goal is to understand recursion and working of recursion here that's why we are thinking from recursive uh, recursive point of view okay can anybody tell me what smaller problem can i solve which will help me solve the bigger problem so if i want to calculate the number of digits in this number if i let's say know the number of digits in this 4 i just have to add plus 1 in it isn't it i'll get my answer similarly if i want this to solve i want just i just want the answer of uh, 864 basically which will give you 3 i do not see uh any responses in the chat can anybody like i am myself stopping here for a second for you to come up with a recursive relation anything in mind like this is just a hint i just gave a hint do you have any idea how could we solve it what could be the recursive relation that could solve it nobody is it that of do we need to print number of values yes we need to rohan uh, let's return from it we just need to return it's a, a function with return value integer not void so let's just return starting and ending add one else two can you repeat again please okay let's do the question i think the question is not clear to many people you are given an integer okay you're given an integer again with uh, n's value and it could be let's say start let's start with something very small or let's this how many the question is you have to return how many digits does this number have this number has five digits isn't it so that is the question how many digits are there in the given input is the question clear now tirumalai okay length of numbers and plus 1 rajesh dinakaran we don't have to use iteration we have to solve this problem by recursion what is the smaller problem that i should solve the question is this what is n by 10 here so if i know the answer of 7834 right if i know the answer of 7834 6 is n modulus then what is the answer of 7834 it's 4 what is the answer i'm trying to divide the problem into smaller problems this was the big problem now i'm finding what smaller problems can give me the answer of the bigger problem is the question still not clear guys to anyone is there anyone to whom the question is still not clear okay yeah anupam that was mod so if you know 783 and then you know the answer of 78 and if you know the answer of 7 then at each step you just need to add plus 1 right so what is the smaller problem that we can solve is finding the answer of n by 10 this is the smaller problem that we need to solve what is the recursive work that we should do what is the small answer basically that we want it's count of digits what should i pass here n by 10 right so let's say if the value of n is 6 something like that okay um so what will this call be what will this call return 
or six, seven, four, eight, n by 10 will be this. And this call will return four. What should I do after this call returned an answer? What is my final answer? What is my work to do now? I have to add one to the smaller answer. That is my work. And ultimately we will return answer, right? What is the base case? What is the smaller problem for which you definitely know the answer? See, from 78, you reached seven. For seven, seven is a single digit, right? It is less than 10 and it's a single digit. For seven, you know, uh, so basically if n is less than 10, if you have reached n less than 10, then there is, so for all the numbers which are less than 10, be it zero, be it one, two, three, anything up till nine, right? How are, what are the number of digits in anything less than 10? It's one, right? So this could be the smallest problem that could save us from going into the infinite loop. Let's try to run it. So count of digits, we got five and I entered a five digit number. Let's say if I enter a bigger number, will I still get the answer? Did I do something wrong? Achha, it's a, it's, I gave a long number instead of, uh, it exceeded the limit of integers basically. Okay. Any doubt in this problem until now? We let's, let's try to understand it a little more if there are doubts, but I still want to know who else, uh, uh, write yes in the chat. If you completely understood it. Okay. Anyone who did not understood it, how to somebody is asking how after this, can you tell how to access each digit of this number? You can access each digit of the number by doing a modulo by doing N by 10, you get the prefix of it. Seven, eight, three, four. But if you do modulo, you'll get six. Re let it be win. That's not a related question. So don't worry. Are you asking to repeat the question itself? So the question was, how do you, okay. Uh, there is some confusion. You guys who are writing um, repeat, are you writing it for the question itself, the whole question or how to understand how to get a single digit number? So I, I am assuming you guys are writing, I didn't understand for the question. Okay. So I'm repeating the question itself, right? <clears throat> okay. Let's do this. Let's take a smaller example this time, uh, Sujit and Jyotirmai. Let's take a smaller example. This is the N that you have been given. Okay. And you have to count the number of digits in this particular number. If I divide 586 by 10, can you tell me what is the result? Jyotirmai and Sujit, what is the result of 586 by 10? Assuming I am not expecting uh, decimal results, it's 58, right? Okay. My question is, if you know the number of digits in 58, then you just have to add plus one to it. Number of digits in 58 is two. So if you add one to the small answer, then you get the real answer. So basically the smaller problem that we are trying to solve is like, just remove this number and tell me the answer. Basically, if I have a number, like say something very big and I know, want to know the answer. Remember, we need to find the smaller problem. The smaller problem in this case is remove this last number and give me the answer of this problem. And then I will add the value of basically the value. Value means adding plus one, not plus two. Uh, value means what it contributes to the answer. So Sujit and uh, Jyotirmai, is this clear now that the smaller problem for this number is solving for n? The smaller problem is getting the answer of n by 10. This is the smaller problem for this number to solve. Is that clear, Sujit? Okay, got it. And then what do you do? The work that you have to do by yourself is adding one to it. And then you simply return the answer. Going back to the code, you calculate the smaller answer, you calculate the bigger answer, and then you return the answer. And this is the base case. N is less than 10 return one. The recursive calls for this look like N calls N by 10. N by 10 calls N by 10 by 10. So that's how the recursive calls will look like. And when this number will become less than 10, it will return one and calls will keep returning up till up until the stack. I wanted to do the dry runs and stack diagrams as well, but in a one hour session, it's not possible to do the dry run and stack diagrams completely, but uh, we can do it for one question at least. Like I have not shown, uh, shown any stack diagrams yet. So do you, do you guys want to move to the next question or see the stack diagram of it so that, you know, you completely understand what's happening in the how the magic of recursion is working. You might, some of you might be thinking, it's just something that we don't understand and how it's happening. Let's do, let's do that. Uh, let's do the stack diagram of this particular question instead of moving to the next question. Okay. Let me, I'll go. Okay. So where the, uh, what does this, uh, 
let's say i just ran the program what will be in the program at the first main function will be called right i'm not writing it we will just write the recursive calls here and in main i am on this line 17 this line calls the count of digits function so count of digits function is first at first called from line 117 from line 117 i'm writing it as f only okay i'm not writing the complete definition f means count of digits function and i'm giving it some value let's consider a small number only f of 534 okay okay then we come on line on the uh, we come on the function itself the first line in the function is a base con is is a if condition if we are we are, we are checking if the current number is less than 10 we return one what is the current number current number is 543 right is it less than 10 guys anupam akshita is it less than 10 no right so we will not enter the stack condition we will not enter the if condition and we'll move to the next line line number 10 line number 10 is calling another the same function again but with different parameters this function is being called again at line number 10 okay and what is the call this time the call is f of 53 Makes sense. Any problem until now? You guys understand the stack calls now. Five thirty four and five thirty fifty three. Where will I go after this line? Okay, I am expecting answers in the chat after line number ten. What will I do next? Will I go on line number thirteen? No. Until and unless the stack call is not completed, you cannot move forward. The stack call has to be completed first. You called a function, right? So you will call the function itself. not move forward in the code that is where you know some people who have just started programming might face a little resistance with it but that's how it works okay you called a function so you'll call the function and you cannot move forward until that function call has completed so we move again to line number 5 like basically the function is called again we are on line number 7 n's value is 53 anugu it doesn't really matter i the python okay that's fine what will change in python right you will just be um the syntax will change the logic will remain the same so try to understand that the syntax doesn't matter the logic matters try to understand the logic of the question rather than uh, focusing like you will not return int like it will be returning but you don't you won't be needing to uh, write the parameter that that is the only thing that will change so language doesn't matter like if i start writing in python some of you will say uh, we don't understand python right um okay so we are on line number 7 if n is less than 10 is n less than 10 no so will line number um, 7 be executed like the if condition will be executed no we'll move to the next line again line number 10 what is the function call in the line number 10 now i am expecting answers in the chat 53 this was 53 n's value was 53 and we divided by 10 So fifty three by ten. What is it? Five. So the function call will be f of five. Okay. Let's move to the next call. Will not move forward once again. The function there is a function call that needs to be completed. Will go top on line seven again. If n is less than ten, yes. For the first time, we have hit the base base case and five, which is less than ten. So we return one. Now there will be no new function calls. This function is returning one. So basically, f five is returning one. and that should have happened five has one digit only right so this function will return one and where will it return it it will return it to the function it it was called from basically f5 was call, called at this line right f5 was this so to the previous call it will return one lakshmi is saying you will get 5.3 so there is uh, i am receiving the answer in an int lakshmi i'm not receiving receiving it in float if i would have there is an implicit conversion Uh, of uh, types basically that's why you are not getting 5.3 and 5 only okay so what is returned f5 has returned one i wanted the answer of f5 at this particular place so this function f in the call of f53 so for n equal to 5 the function call completed okay this has been removed from the stack i will erase it from the eraser so that it is more clear so this function call completed popped out and where will it return it will return to the next whatever is on the top so stack follows the structure of leafo so last in first out that was the last thing that was entered and that's why it was removed and where will it be uh, where will what will be the next thing that is should be executed whatever is in or on the is in uh, is on the top of stack okay so if that function call is completed the next thing to be executed is whatever is on top of stack so f for f53 we called f5 remember 
for f53 we called f5 and that f5 is this particular call that has finally returned me some value and what is that value that has returned that was returned it was 1 so i know for f53 okay so for this particular call i'm writing it here for f53 small answer line number 10 okay has returned 1 is this clear until now for function 53 for 53 call on line number 10 you have received small answer as 1 from the next function call is this thing clear guys if not we can try explaining it again sujit akshita narsing those guys who wanted the stack diagram right so line number 10 got 1 as a small answer in fifth in the 53th uh, function call where the value of n was 53 okay line 10 finally done For fifty three, we were on line ten. Now we can move to line number thirteen. What will line number thirteen do? It will calculate answer. And answer is small answer. What is the value of small answer? It's one one plus. And what is the uh, value that we are adding? We are adding one again. So line number thirteen calculated answer as two. And on line number fifteen, you returned answer. So what is being uh, two is returned by which function call? Two is returned as the result of f fifty three. So for f five, the result was one, right? From the base case, for f fifty three, the answer is calculated as two. That is returned now. Again, we are doing a return. So f fifty three returned. Where will it return? Fifty three five three four. That was the call uh, for five three four, right? Now let's make it the same thing for five three four. Use another pen. So this is five three four. For five three four, line number ten gave. Or uh, uh, got small answer as two because what was the call on this line? It was five f fifty three. F fifty three was called on line number ten and f t f fifty three returned two as the result. So on line number two, we re we received two as a result. Now we can move forward because this has been removed from the stack. Moving forward on five thirty fourth call, answer is a small answer plus one. What is answer? Which is line number thirteen. Answer is small answer. What is small answer two and plus one, which is three, and return answer. So now this five fifty three four call was being run, and this has received answer as three. Five fifty three four has returned answer as three, and there was a main function here, and this was returned on line number one hundred sixteen. Okay, so that's how the stack diagram looked like. That's how the function calls are being made. That's how the magic of recursion is working. so nothing like magic is happening every call is being executed for sure but for the purpose of saying and solving it uh, easily we call let's just trust recursion in what it will give us is it clear now guys is the question clear now guys to all those people whom it was not clear before okay glad it is we are let's solve one more question is that fine like we have already completed one hour but if you want we can solve one more question some of digits okay let's solve one more question and the next question is Finding the sum of digits. Basically, let's say if you are given three, two, one, four as an input, this function should return three plus two five and ten. Okay, so this is the question. I want answers in the chat now. Okay, what is the smaller problem that could give us answers? It is a very similar problem. So, what should I know for solving the answer of what should I know basically to find the sum of three, two, one, four? What should I know? Modulus. Akshita is saying modulus. Yes. So basically, if you do the uh, modulus, no, Akshita. Okay. Let's just look at it from another point of view. I hope I'll make it more clearer now. For wanting the answer of three to one four, somebody yeah. Okay. Somebody did say the right answer in the chat. Ayushi. Four plus sum of three to one. We should know the sum of the three numbers. Exactly. Abhi, let's say let's do one thing. Either I should know the answer of three to one and I should add four to it, or I should know the answer of um. Two one four, and I should add three to it. Both are both the approaches could be done, but why? Uh, okay, how can you receive basically? Or uh, how could you make this particular call? This is n by ten, right? But this number two one four, it's not easy to get the suffix of a number as compared to getting the prefix of a number. So by doing a division, you get the prefix of a number. But finding the suffix of a number is a tough deal, right? When let's say we wanted to just get the last digit we just wanted to get the modulo then we could have got it by doing n modulo 10 so if i have 3 to 1 4 n by 10 is 3 to 1 and n modulo 10 is 4 so whenever we are 
trying to find the smaller problems in questions of integers or numbers most of the cases you will be doing n by 10 right if you know if it requires to find the prefix of a number or some subset of a number what is this for this for i actually wrote it here already four is n modulus 10 so basically for finding sum of digits of three two four one you should know the sum of digits of three two four or let's write it six and what you will do this was the recursive work and what is your responsibility adding six into it and how will you find six you will find six by doing by taking the modulus of this number right makes sense guys everybody this makes sense let's try to write the code of it then, then i'll ask again let's copy it itself hmm. how will i calculate my bigger answer now the question is this i i will not need to add one i need to add the exact number right so in a small answer what do i need to add any answers in the chat what do i need to add in the small answer to get my final answer what should i add here i already told it in the uh, diagram no answers in the chat modulo of the number right ujwal you would want to add the modulo of the number sum of digits is 14 for whatever input i gave in let's check sum of digits for 5416254981810 and 18 Okay, so we did one. There is something wrong in this code. Can anybody point out point out what is wrong in this code? So I gave this as the input, and five four one six two five four nine ten eighteen should have been the answer, but I got fourteen as the answer. So there is something wrong in the code. Can anybody point out what is wrong in the code? I've opened the code here. You can see. I want you to point out the mistake in this code. Why is this giving wrong output? Look closely. Trusting recursion. Okay. Five, four, six, one, two was the input. I really want you to find out yourself. What is the problem? Five, four, six, one, two uh, would have called five, four, six, one, which would have given you the answer five, four, nine and seven. Let me check back again. Return statement. Somebody said return statement. Ayush Mittal right. Gave the right answer already, but for others, let me do it. 16 should have been the answer and we should have added a uh, small answer was 16. And n modulus 2, which n was 5, 4, 6, 1, 2, modulus 10. It should have worked. But what was, you know, what went wrong? This went wrong, guys. If n was less than 10, basically, if when n became 2, na, we returned 1 instead of returning 2. That's why we got wrong answer. It should not be 2. It should be n. 18. Okay. Is this question clear to you all? Yes. Anybody to whom this question is not clear? It's like, it's exactly the same question. Only your responsibility are part has changed your responsibility is to add the number instead of adding plus one in the previous number right so in all the questions that we solved what all we did we've identified the smaller problem in each and every question we identified the smaller problem we did some work by ourselves and we identify the base case in each and every question we did that okay any doubts until now please guys write something in the chat did you understood it not understood it should i explain it again Okay, so I'm assuming um, understood. Okay, that's how you should do it, right? <laughs> All right, so guys, actually, I wanted to cover many more questions today. But, you know, recursion is a very, uh, is a topic that is a lot dependent upon the audience. We needed to do a lot of uh, stack diagrams and everything. So the time is already up. We are, uh, we've completed one hour. So I will be opening the Q&A right now. If you have any questions, uh, do ask. We will continue after this from the next session itself. And I will be sharing the links of the question that I've solved with you all separately. I will share, share it to Ajay or uh, someone from Verzio and they will send it to you. Okay. I've written it already, but I need to upload it to GitHub. I will share the code that we have written and the assignment problems as well. So basically, I wanted to solve these many more problems today but we were not able to solve all of them. So in the next session, I'll be continuing with that. For your assignment, you guys just revise what I have told you and um, try to write the code of all the questions that we did today. And you will get this, like try to solve these questions. If you are able to solve them well and good. In the next session, we'll be, uh, I'll be probably skipping these problems and I'll start from a little tougher problems, okay? So from before you come to the next session, make sure, let's say, okay, I'll share it, this document with you. Before you come to the next session, try to solve these nine problems at least. Like some of them we already solved. 
until uh, three, four problems you have already solved. Try to solve the rest of them by yourself and we'll continue from the next session. Okay. Okay. I am looking at the questions. Ma'am, what is the difference between loop and recursion when machine learning starts, ma'am? I will think, Srishni, somebody from Verzio will be able to answer that. Uh, what is the difference between loop and recursion? So, Ujwal, actually, um, in loop, you are not calling some other function, right? Okay. So, in recursion, you call some other function. If you ask me, how does their functioning differ? Then there is no difference. You can do all the things that you can do with recursion by looping. But these were simpler problems. As we move forward, you will see tougher problems for whom the logic will be very difficult to write with um, iteration, especially when you'll move to trees and backtracking. And even in recursion, you'll find problems that are tough to solve by iteration but they are relatively very simple to solve with recursion so by functioning point of view there is no difference by complexity point of view in terms of um time complexity it depends upon the question again in terms of space complexity recursion uses the stack space which stack does so star iteration looping will not take any extra sp uh, space for the stack but recursion will so there is a space overhead if you try to solve any question by recursion okay yes lakshmi recursion is actually easier than um like it depends on the question if i give you some like print the sub all the se uh, sub sequences of this string or all the subsets of this set then thinking it by recursion is really tough uh, by iteration is really tough as compared to thinking it through recursion so you might find recursion difficult in the beginning, but ultimately that is your savior. Like remember my first slide, it forms the basis of so many important concepts in uh, programming, in data structures and algorithms. That's why, and trust me, it is easy, but also like everyone finds it difficult. There is no person who has found it easy in the beginning. So take time, give time to it and you will be good. Is it recursion? Any other questions? Will you share it by email? GitHub link? Yes, guys, I will share it um, to the Verzio representatives and they will share it to you via email, I guess. Is, is, uh, is Ajay listening to us right now? If you can answer that question for us, how will you be sharing through email, guys? I think probably Ajay is not on the call, but yes. Um, uh, yeah, Manvi, uh, we'll be sharing them, okay, if uh, any appropriate details are to be shared to them, okay, they can uh, get in touch with us on support at the rate versio.com, okay, we'll be able to help them out. Okay, so I have to push this for recipe and make the repo as well, so yeah, you'll get the GitHub link uh, via email or something. Um, so, Raju, I am not really sure about uh, when will machine learning start. Ma'am, again, when would be the next class? I think it's scheduled on 11th of March, guys. Okay, guys, please revise whatever has been taught today and, you know, keep practicing. That's how you will um, understand recursion. It's, a, it's not an easy topic. All right, guys, thank you all for tuning in today. And I hope that you guys learned something today. Uh, yeah, man, we thank you. Uh, we would like to appreciate you a lot from our team. Okay. We are, and all the students as well and one more thing to notify we'll be having the second session by manvi itself on 7th okay stay tuned and all the updates will be made to you okay kindly keep checking your mails for further details and to add on we have one more session by shiva shankar on data science uh, on 9th uh, of this month itself okay even those details will be sent to you shortly kindly wait Okay, thank you, Manvi, and all the participants. We'll be ending the session in two seconds. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Visit verzeo.com. Subscribe to our channel to know more.